okay let's see how it works this time maybe it's a little bit better i don't know if instagram changed anything uh, but all of you who are watching um, if you can tell me i don't even know if actually anybody's gotten on yeah anybody who's watching can you all tell me once guruji is on if you can see both of us split in the screen krishna ji could you see us both split in the screen or you could just see me just let me know how that was working out hi so hi you could see us yes or no i don't understand just let us know if you could see us both so i'm guessing you all could see us both only me okay thanks vijay for telling me okay only me okay let's see how this is going to work out this time i don't know that's really weird that's never happened i feel like sometimes these technical difficulties hi lisa just me yeah let's see how this works I have my little girl here. Sanjay, your iPad is outside, so it's charging. Okay, hopefully this is gonna work. Yeah, otherwise, Krishna. Yeah, now it's working. Now has technology for now. For now, can you see me? I can see you clearly, Guruji. Can you see me? But I cannot uh, see myself, but I can see you. Okay, Guruji. I can see both. So, yeah. So, Guruji, uh, can everybody see both of us? Can Guru everybody see both of us? Yeah. Okay. Now I see you both. Okay. So, Guruji, everybody can see both of us. So we are perfect. But the sound, yeah. But the sound is breaking. But I cannot see myself. I don't know what happened to my video. So I think Guruji, the connection maybe was it raining in Kerala? It's not raining. Okay, then let me check. I uh, mean, change my phone. Then I will take. I will come in with another phone. I think I changed the phone. Okay, That's Guruji. Why. Okay, okay. In the meantime, yeah. we can okay. continue to chat. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'd like to hear from everybody how start the world starting again in September. How that's kind of gone for people. I really want to know because I've heard a lot of different things. A uh, lot of energies collide. just if anybody wants to share it would be really really great for me to hear what's happening because 2020 promised and it also promised that for anybody who was in a spiritual path this was a year of great healing uh, i know i feel like i have witnessed that as well like great changes internally vijay guruji uh who are you talking to today i'll tell you so uh, vijay guruji is going to join again so lisa i'm talking to uh, this master from kerala who is a great spiritual master and the reason why he is so appealing to me is because he doesn't say that you have to follow a guru for your whole life to get anywhere right it's very it's very unusual he says the path really lies within you that in a wisdom for you to awaken there is no external path or prescription and he really encourages us and teaches us how to discover that in a wisdom um and it doesn't have to be the same steps for you as it is for me because all our journeys are so different which is really unheard of in today's day and age somebody can so scientifically as well as philosophically explain how to find yourself on that path and the in the empowerment that i felt after talking to guruji the realization that i really have it in me and then we all have it in us to uh to really create that in a power and make our inner reality so strong that the outer reality doesn't matter so i have thoroughly enjoyed and this has been quite life changing for me uh you are heading for country closing again in england oh wow again lockdown yeah we are think i think we're going to be in the same place we just opened up for a little break and i feel like new york is going to close again uh you did feel yeah energies and intentions changing you're pretty Oh, there has been a shift in the planets from first September. I've been reading a lot of stuff. This is going to be a great time of change. Yeah, Kalyani, exactly right. Good and bad, both. We have the opportunity to elevate any time something like this happens. But it's very hard, especially for those who really experienced, uh, you know, losses in their family, things really going on. But such a big responsibility for us to keep that inner inner self alive. And slow energy or distress up. Okay, Guruji is here again. He's changed his phone. Let's see. I really appreciate all the patience everybody has. 
uh, waiting. I know his words are so precious, Guruji's words that you want to. Guruji. How is it now? Perfect, Guruji. For us, it's perfect. Can you hear us well? Oh, uh, now it's worse than before. The sound is really breaking. So, Guruji, we can hear you very well. I can hear you very well. So I'm going to try not to get perturbed and just feel like, again, this is Narad Muni at play. For whatever reason, we've had this situation. Um, and I, I really, truly admire the patience of everybody. So I'm going to just talk about a few of the things that I've been doing to rewire myself, because I feel like what happens with me every time the weekend comes, I kind of go off track. I really enjoy my weekends and come into Kalyuga, so coming back on track takes a while on Mondays. Here, Guruji is here. Yes, Namaste. Namaste, Pranam Guruji. Is this better now? Yes. It's better, Guruji? Yes, better now. Okay, Guruji, let's do it. Whatever we get, we get from this. <laughs> okay, let us try our best. <laughs> yes, Guruji, absolutely, Guruji. Let's try our best. Okay. How have you been, Guruji? Always like before, every day <laughs> but a uh, few meetings and a uh, few travelings, everything. I was busy last week, so I couldn't manage it. Of course, Guruji, no problem. We completely understand. In fact, I think we also, I took the week to think about your teachings. I said, if we can't talk to Guruji, we'll think about everything Guruji's taught us. So that's what we ended up doing. I ended up thinking about everything you taught us and it's been so useful. So now, Guruji, we want to understand uh, Kundalini Yoga today because there is so much talk in the world about, you know, Kundalini Yoga and no, like I feel like we've, it's all misunderstood. We don't understand it completely well. So, of course, the whole understanding is Kundalini is your power within you, which is in your base chakra, in your Mula Skanda, Mula Dhara, and, you know, it is coiled with those, the, the Ida Pingla. And when you awaken it, you have the ability to witness Satchitanand. So Guruji, can you explain to us simply what is Kundalini and, uh, and, and what is Kundalini Yoga? The word Kundalini means coiled, stored energy. It's like a dynamo. There is an armature, like a, this coiled um, copper wire placed in between two magnets. And once it is rotated, electricity will be produced. Mm -hmm. Same way, each and every cell in our body has an armature and a motor inside, settled by or fixed by the secret of nature. Mm -hmm. And in our body also, mm -hmm. body is a combination of 150 trillion cells. Mm -hmm. And all these cells are working together to form mm -hmm our nervous system and everything. Mm -hmm. And in the coccyx region, mm -hmm. there is a sacred place called Muladhara. So this, in that Muladhara, certain kind of energy is stored. That is what is called Kundalini. Represented as a snake, which is, you know, having three uh, circles and tying its uh, mouth with the tail. That is the tantric symbol of Kundalini. It's simply like that copper wire in the dynamo. So this is what is called Kundalini, the coiled stored energy within. To explore the technique of that, uh, you know, creation or that preservation, we have to focus our mind over there. Once focused the mind, fixed on that point, it will be heated. It's called Taba. Taba means heating up. Once the heat uh, reaches to beyond certain limit, this coiled energy will be awakening. That is what is called Kundalini awakening. Once it is awakened, we will come to know how that coiled energy is stored over there and how much link is there or how, say, you know, sensationally it is linked with the cosmic law. So we will come to know 
how the planets are connected with us how the galaxies are sending energy to us and how we are sending energy back and each and every molecule in this nature will be in a cosmic dance along with us the understanding of this cosmic reality is called kundalini yoga it has different names raja yoga um, kriya yoga then um, kaula yoga siddha yoga all these yogas are mentioned about kundalini yoga yoga yes so basically you know guruji at at some point i had studied that the prana enters to the brahmarandra and it goes and settles there in the mula skandha so this is all connected to that that this is where the latent energy i'm trying to understand this is where the latent energy resides of a human yes. being and uh, as we keep kind of giving our attention there and you know one of the things that is coming to my mind is what you said earlier is that generally the apana you know the apana which is the downward moving yes. and the prana is the upward moving and yes. for us through kundalini we channel that energy to really become a sharp force and awaken because otherwise it's dormant and dead so again the moment we start thinking of this kundalini shakti the power mm-hmm. or the, the latent power mm. mind is active mm-hmm. so this uh, you know, secret cannot be understood through the frame of our mind mm-hmm. how you mm-hmm. will be this yeah see like uh, our galaxy we may think milky way galaxy is huge for our yeah. mind yeah but in, in in front of nature or the reality of nature this galaxy galaxy is a speck right yes so we cannot understand exactly what kundalini power through our mind that right. is why patanjali maharshi very clearly stated that atha yoga anushasanam mm-hmm. now i am going to explain what yoga is mm-hmm. the second line is saying this yoga chitta vritti nirodha mm-hmm. arrest the functions of your mind mm-hmm. then only you will understand what it is actually it is not an intellectual understanding it is an intuitive you know exploration mm-hmm. this is what mm-hmm. is happening mm-hmm. so we can say in the beginning there is ida pingala then uh, dasha pranas then mola skanda many things we can say these are all meant to be in the frame of mind mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. this is why uh, in yajnava in now in the chandakya upanishad sage yajnavalkya was asked this question by gargi as you ask are asking to me mm 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 i know it's like a showers of questions mm mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. master was saying this if you keep thinking of kundalini shakti or this uh, spiritual evolution if you start thinking your head will explode mm-hmm. that is the mm-hmm. mm-hmm. gargi will ask then what else i should do guru mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then uh, he will say meditate arrest mm-hmm. the functions of mind mm-hmm. obliterate mm-hmm. your the, the boundaries of your mind mm-hmm. the mind will be dissolved into the prana shakti prana mm-hmm. is not our our vyashti mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. our limited prana it is mm-hmm. a cosmic prana Mm-hmm. it is exactly like we took we took one glass of water from the ocean mm-hmm. and the water we kept on a, in a glass mm-hmm. and we say this is ocean sea water mm-hmm. and it, it has a shape of mm-hmm. a container container mm-hmm. how you were we speak of this uh, ocean water we can say yeah it has uh, salt inside minerals inside many many things we can ask until we take this glass of water to the ocean back and pour on ocean what will happen the significance of that water in the container will be lost and it will become the ocean itself same way we are every individual is like a glass of water from the ocean we keep on discussing about the uh, depth and the vastness of ocean until we rechange or remove the limitations break this boundaries then transform ourselves into the cosmic ocean that is what is only possible otherwise this kundalini yoga or any kind of yogic experience 
cannot be explained it should be experienced so we have to stick to the practice okay lovely sir the lovely guruji it was very well explained basically what you're saying is that how much we intellectualize and try and understand what a beautiful explanation that you can get the glass of water and uh, from the ocean and think that this is the ocean water and you can discuss it endlessly but the true experience of feeling like that ocean really will happen when the water is merged into the whole ocean and similarly we have our prana and there is cosmic prana there is a cosmic energetic truth and then we have our own energy field and unless it merges with the cosmic this is everything is just a discussion and it means nothing else so guruji where does a person i want to also explore the different types of yoga you said raja yoga siddha yoga because to me i cannot understand yoga is yoga like so many different i i personally maybe have not explored it well <laughs> but uh, you know where does so so you said somebody begins with chitta vritti nirodha what are the journeys on you know what is the journey of somebody who wants to explore kundalini yoga he may begin with chitta vridhi nirodha but how does he go forward in his path actually this kundalini yoga is classified into four this is what is karma bhakti jnana yoga ha uh ha -huh. karma means we have to engage ourselves into actions because without action nobody can survive mm -hmm. so we have to do our job but we should tell ourselves that mm -hmm. i should not have an ego centric mind mm hmm though i look like that i am an independent person mm -hmm. i have intricate links mm -hmm. with the, the law of nature mm -hmm. in essence i am the nature so this ideology or this thought has to be entertained mm -hmm. along with the, our action that is what is called nishkama karma mm -hmm. so we are into action mm -hmm. but not bothered about the rewards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is called karma yoga so we mm -hmm. are all doing that Mm -hmm. when we keep on practicing like that mm -hmm. slowly we will come to know that a cosmic reality is in front of me so on behalf of that i am doing so i will get a sentimental attachment with that infinite reality that is what is called bhakti so devotion will come naturally will start... sorry it will come naturally it will come naturally as we keep yes yes it, yes it will come naturally absolutely yeah yes. when that uh, devotion develops mm. our commi commitment or the attachment with the cosmic reality will be you know strengthened then when we get that adequate strength on devotion we will get a tendency to know about that reality nana no, no. there yes there all this text scriptures everything will come as a complement we can go through that oh our masters who had already gone through this path they had experienced all these things these are the commentaries of their experience mm -hmm. it's like road signs when we drive in a uh, strange terrain mm -hmm. so there when our intellect will get sufficient conclusions that is what is called jnana yoga so from karma we reach to bhakti from bhakti we elevate it ourselves into jnana so intellect is aware of the cosmic reality then only difference is intellect is skeptical always so how can i see that how can i smell that so intellect is developing only through the senses there we will be capable of or we will become matured enough to make a union between all these senses it, it's a very very fantastic experience when we meditate you also might have and you know experienced it see when if we penetrate one needle from one ear to the other ear and another needle from our center of eyebrows straight back to this area in this in exactly in the center of brain that two needles will touch there we can experience something like all our organs eyes nose tongue skin ears these five organs have millions of cavities all these cavities are being centralized over there this is what is said by agastya muni and uh, swarmarama kapala kugare madhi 
चतुर्द्वारस्य मध्य में नागात्मा राजदे तत्र यथा योमिनी दिवागर मीन्स कपाल कुहर मीन्स दि केव ऑफ द स्कल एंड चतुर्द्वार वन टू थ्री चतुर्द्वार चतुर्द्वार से फोर होल्स मध्य में इन द मिडिल मीटिंग पॉइंट नागात्मा राजदे तत्र the sound which is shining can be seen like millions of suns are rising together you can experience the cosmic light which we say effulgence of god so it can be practiced in raja yoga or kundalini yoga once it happened in the beginning we can see when we try to fix our accounts in a mind in the center of eyebrows the pineal gland will be activated it will start producing the enzyme the hormone which will give us an ecstatic feeling slowly brain will be capable of you know bearing the load because the cosmic experience is high voltage electricity we can say technically so brain cells should be should be prepared for withstanding that light so this hormones in the pituitary and pineal gland will prepare the brain then we will be able to understand sufficient hormones will be produced in our body there we will get that uh, exuberance of this cosmic experience so this is what is called kundalini awakening the hidden potential will be explored so these are the four levels of bhakti karma jnana yoga when we do that in a systematic way there is a safe advancement and a possibility of experience very very makes so much sense and it's taking me back to tantra but guru ji before that i want to share a story and now it makes sense you know few years ago i was in mumbai and mm-hmm. i was i used to sneeze all the time i had rhinitis to the point that i just my eyes nose i was itchy and sneezing and sneezing and sneezing and you know at that point guru ji i just decided to go into a meditation and observe my breath mm-hmm. and i don't know what happened but you know because you said this chaturdwara my entire focus went on that place so somehow i didn't even mean for it to happen and then i don't know what happened i went into a completely different state i didn't i completely stopped sneezing i fell asleep and that problem didn't come back yes so and, uh, I was at that point I was extremely like I was very excited about what happened but I didn't understand so well it's taken me this and when you explained it right now it makes sense See that is what mind is the reality of our existence So it is no it is not functioning in our body or in our brain it is a cosmic canvas Mhm if we can understand that omnipotence Mm-hmm. that my mind can solve all our issues this is why technically now we say meditation can replace all medications for sure for sure and this happened to me by experience even now it's it's awful and i guru ji you know if i go into a sneezing bout sometimes in india is just i'm like okay mummy give me one second and then the minute i go into that meditation it stops completely and uh, i shouldn't exploit it like that but it, i completely understand what you mean and now guruji i want to just also summarize what you said uh, for anybody especially the non indians uh, what happens is that guruji said that the starting place for this journey right a lot of people like i know try to go into bhakti and they can't feel the bhakti or they try to go into gnana and they can't understand or experience the gnana but if it it starts in our daily life by doing every action understanding that there is a cosmic reality and doing it with that selflessness with the sense of witnessing it you know just as a medium and as we keep doing that and we start experiencing the connection with the cosmic reality and understanding that we are just here you know like guruji gave us an example last time or few months ago that a mother scolds the child right or punishes the child the feeling with which it punishes the child is not of anger and hatred 
it's just i have to do this so i'm doing it you know that kind of feeling when we do our karmas whatever we need to do with that experience we automatically start feeling this sense of bhakti and abundance and connection with everything in the world and as we keep doing that that's called you actually naturally enter into the bhakti yoga phase and it's very easy to feel that uh, bhakti from that revelations start happening as we are so connected naturally revelations start happening in our daily life that's when you come to the gnana phase gnana yoga which is knowledge uh, and experiential knowledge and yes. after that comes yoga and guruji you mentioned raja yoga and kundalini yoga now can you explain to us what exactly raja yoga is what kundalini yoga is and what does the practice even though it may not be like you said a trained practice you know you nobody can train you you got to arrive at it rather than go to it uh, what how what is just even for our own understanding what is what are the both how are they different and also where does asana come into play this uh, raja yoga and kundalini yoga has no difference both are same mm mm-hmm. rajaso rajaso yoga raja yoga it is smrata this is the explanation in our text mm-hmm. rajas means our have uh, we have certain kind of activity mind is active mm-hmm. but we don't know what mind is mm-hmm. rajas is the manifested form of mind is matter so the subtle energy is our mind Mm-hmm. and the matter is the tangible body mm-hmm. so this rajas subtle rajas is tangible i mean the mat uh, the gross one so once this set, uh, you know sukshma and stula subtle and gross merge each other mm-hmm. the real experience will come beyond both mm-hmm. we have a certain existence beyond our mind and body so mm-hmm. union between mind and body is called yoga Mm-hmm. so when we do this one as a scientific practice this mm-hmm. is what is called raja yoga the activity is merged into the matter that is why it's called raja yoga but same kundalini yoga kundalini awakening is happening technically it is like physics is having certain differences like quantum physics material physics high energy physics Mm-hmm. so we can we can classify according to the level of understanding or experiment but basically it is kundalini yoga the hidden energy should be explored there is no difference between raja yoga and kundalini yoga both are same then why this different names came this idea was developed in a huge country so our today's india is not the not was the exact bharat Mm-hmm. or the ancient hindustan mm mm-hmm. india today's india pakistan bangladesh afghanistan mauritius then indonesia sri lanka the whole, whole subcontinent yeah one yeah it was a huge continent yeah and in different places different languages different culture but the idea was given as the humanity mm-hmm. or the purpose of life was atma jnana knowledge mm-hmm. of the self that mm-hmm. was the meaning or that was the essence of our life or a question is there why we are born mm-hmm. why we are born to make money <laughs> or to construct a good house or getting a good job or just uh, you know competing with others or pulling others leg <laughs> <laughs> i was born to pull others legs but yeah okay guru ji <laughs> so we don't know why we are born that is why we are unhappy so the purpose of life is to understand why i am born that mm-hmm. is the goal of life mm-hmm. this message was spread to the whole country i mean mm-hmm. whole continent mm-hmm. then people were asking how can it be possible mm-hmm. hundreds and thousands of methods were taught mm-hmm. like karma bhakti jnana mm-hmm. yoga sura leya mm-hmm. many 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 things were taught Mm-hmm. according to the region language and many masters put their contribution so different names came mm-hmm. it's like our body mm-hmm. we have hand finger nail uh, hair many 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 things are there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but at the end of the day what is this this is the body mm-hmm. 
again go beyond it it's a combination mm-hmm. of molecules go beyond that then molecules are created from the mind mm-hmm. go beyond the mind something which is beyond comprehension so difference is only in the peripheral level when mm-hmm. we go to the essence there is no difference at all then one more question you asked the significance of asana mm-hmm. if we want to explore this energy the hidden energy we must have a stability in our posture mm-hmm. when we sit on floor mm-hmm. with a straight spine mm-hmm. then body will take a pyramid shape mm mm-hmm. mm mm without that pyramid shape nobody can go beyond the limitation of our senses it's like see any anything wants to go beyond the gravity like a rocket you see the the uh, t- tip of the rocket mm-hmm. it is a pyramid without mm-hmm. that pyramid it cannot penetrate towards its aim mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so any bimba any idol you take mm-hmm. in nature you mm-hmm. can see a pyramid shape yes. even when we sit uh, in meditation we can see it's a pyramid shape absolutely now, now even the uh, pyramid therapy is being introduced mm-hmm. but again people are falling into its ritualistic section but no we should go to the essence mm-hmm. then only we can explore its real potential mm-hmm. so posture is very important mm-hmm. and we have to be comfortable in that that's why patanjali maharshi only one line he wrote about asana stiram sukham asana so you should be comfortably sitting on a posture for meditation that is the ultimate aim when we sit beyond certain limit our you know the disc in the uh, cervical area thoracic area lumbar area disc will be projecting it will start touching the spinal cord as the intensity increases different types of hormones will be developed in our body that is what he said pranapani ur grandhi grandhi means gland new new glands should be you know developed within the body activated then that hormones will make you understand what is the reality of your existence every feeling every sensation our sensual knowledge is linked with or closely associated with the hormone as you know that also we discussed earlier anger is an outcome of the function of adrenaline and passion i mean compassion unconditional love everything is the dimethyltryptamine this uh, hormone produced by our pineal gland pituitary liver pancreas there are many many visible glands are there same time many invisible glands also available in our body so when we activate this one we will become aware of the link between even the galaxies so like uh, i think yeah we already discussed this ladies menstrual cycle mm-hmm. how it is linked with the 28 days mm-hmm. this is closely associated with the, the rotation the circulation of the moon yeah we did not discuss this but guruji i would love to yeah moon we discussed the moon and the hormones we discussed that yeah yes so yeah. every so we will come to know that is very visible we, yeah. you know if you can understand through our you know, ordinary senses yeah but like that even the galaxies are sending their energies to us yeah we yes are closely associated with that why we yes. are not understanding that because that kind of hormones are not developed with it when we do the concentration the pro intense meditation mind will be activating these hidden glands when this gland start producing hormones we will come to know the link between even the stars and galaxies that makes so much sense the radio receiver of this yeah. understanding is literally our spine and all yes. of this and when we when we are able to do the reason why asana is such an important part is because without that when there is like a bend in the wire you know like even in a normal electric circuit if there is a bend then the energy cannot flow properly so you learn yeah. to sit in a way that you can maintain that pyramid shape and when you yes. can do that like guruji said for a certain amount of time and you've held it together 
then there's like this kind of imp- electrical impulses that can start in the yes. spine and with that there is production of certain hormones, hormones. Um, yes. and those hormones and that state of being which can then come about can literally make us that radio receiver to receive all this cosmic signals and the understanding of the world around us yes sounds amazing so guru ji the one thing that i want to ask you now is so you know there's all of this in the west you see everywhere i live in new york kundalini yoga kundalini yoga kundalini yoga <laughs> so guru ji and there are all of these kriyas right these aggressive kriyas and somebody asked this question too we i i now i think we finally understand how uh, bhag, uh, karma leads to bhakti leads to gnana then when somebody comes to this kundalini phase and all of this advocation of these ex- of these kriyas what is really that journey of kundalini yoga where does one like i know i spoke even at indi masi they give shri vidya i know i spoke yeah. to krishna ji and there is so what is that path when somebody says hey i want to pass so follow this path of kundalini yoga i have come to the gnana i understand i have some experience of this connection with the universe what next again shri vidya yoga also another name of kundalini yoga mm-hmm. because we have a, you know latent energy as you said it's like our male energy is usually passive like mm-hmm. a phase in our mm-hmm. electricity mm-hmm. if neutral is not connected that phase cannot be active mm-hmm. same way our male energy should be linked with the female energy mm-hmm. again you will ask okay what is male and female please no. you spoke oh, about this <laughs> no you are you, you already answered this guru guru ji and completely we can relate i can relate to it in my own mind as well yeah yeah so the the purpose the goal yeah. of kundalini yoga is mm-hmm. to understand who i am mm-hmm. so it has nothing to do with the discussion or groups you know section or uh, you know like uh, ideological things nothing this is the language of silence that is why all our masters were known as munis ha uh, mauna means mauna a person he and uh, who observes his silence is called muni a mauni technically they are called munis so when we start listening our silence we can start hearing a violence within experience a violence within again penetrate that violence also you will get fall into a further silence observe that silence again you can see a violence so this in and out involution evolution involution evolution this is what is called it symbolized as raudra tandava you know shiva is when he dances that is what is called the tandava nrutta is different he is in a very good mood in a rhythmic uh, you know dance is called nada raja nrutta nada means rhythmic nrutta means dance but there is another one called tandava mm-hmm. the cosmic molecules are bombarding each other mm-hmm. with a certain rhythm that is what is called raudra tandava mm-hmm. when we reach to that level mm-hmm. we will you know from where this molecules are evolved that's called maha vishodana vishodana means the cosmic explosion big bang big bang but big bang presupposes mm-hmm. a big crunch a big Mahasimhara. crunch crunch yes so evolution is an after effect of involution again from involution something will be evolved like a seed when we take a particular seed of a plant you cannot see a plant inside the plant is involved inside when that seed is kept in the proper in a soil when time comes it will start evolving as a tree before that tree was involved in the uh, seed like that each and every cell of our body is containing the reality of this universe it should be evolved so when i recognize that i will smile from my heart when you experience that you will start smiling from your heart then you will not have a question without an answer mm-hmm. you may explain or may not explain that mm-hmm. is not the question mm-hmm. but you will have a conclusion about mm-hmm. everything in your life mm-hmm. 
that is the language of silence mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all these munis are contented mm-hmm. nothing can shake them up so if you see a board kundalini yoga just straight you ask a question is there a god this is what i did when i was searching for my guru i traveled all over india and i used to see many masters focus on their eyes and ask the first question is there a god guruji and they used to say yeah yes there is god and everything okay have you seen him that was my second question and uh, 99% whom i met could declare that yes i saw god then they start saying that you know god is beyond explanation and you have to practice that there i used to say okay thank you guruji i used to leave the place until i met swami shivajyoti dharmananda yeah. i kept yeah. on searching when i saw my ma- that dharmananda swami also i focused on his eyes and said swami ji is there a god he said yeah yes there is god second question have you seen him simply he said yes i see god as i see you child there my you know inquiry come to an end this is what happened the yeah. so same way if you feel that or if you recognize that i know the universe i am the omnipotent aham brahmasmi and if you can declare that you are the god yes kundalini has awakened on you otherwise if you are trying to explain what god is to convince others without convincing yourself yes then you are still a student mm-hmm. not a yogi absolutely yes absolutely guruji very true that it comes from that knowing you just know it yes. you don't have to explain it it's no intellectualization but guruji two important questions have come up in the comments and i want to take them both right yes. so i think now uh, you know we have we understood that kundalini needs to be experienced it comes like that you know after yes. you've been in the gnana phase but when it comes to all of these kriyas do you and there's a lot of people doing a lot of kriyas do you do you think that there is merit in doing some of those kriyas it has little effect as a physical exercise as when you go for a jogging mm. you will get some muscular movements thighs will work calf muscle will work and abdominal muscle will work so like that uh, you will get a muscular movement and you will get a benefit in long run you will get other problems also <laughs> <laughs> so See, like that is why I can declare that I was a boxer and I was a karate master. So I I knew how the stray you know muscle can be strained and how much uh, power we can take out and what will be the after effect. I had gone through all these things. So what I am saying is all these kriyas, external kriyas like uh, bastriga, then kapal bhari, we can do that. and as a simple exercise muscular movements will give you certain benefit but in long run it will give you its side effects so what should what should one do let's say guruji one has you know understood karma feels the bhakti has some revelations as nana is in america cannot have access to anything is in their house in quarantine what is it that they do now to explore the power of kundalini do they sit in meditation and focus on the kundalini or do they awaken the inner power what is it that we can do first uh, we have to make our sadhana as simple as possible hmm they, they, very well as I, as i showed in that video yeah just find a comfortable posture either uh-huh. padmasana siddhasana sukhasana uh, badrasana any posture we can say it, but a body should be in a pyramid shape then practice that retention hold as much as possible actually that is what is called nadi shuti but if you go through the text you have to do the mudra then close your right nostril inhale through left again exhale through right these are all peripheral external practice you never get the you know uh, the real result the full benefit Because, yes yeah when we raise on hand our alignment is completely changed and we will be conscious about the muscle the mind you said that last time it's just yeah. from that yeah, we have to get that. humble 
stambara means you know Steady. like uh, stability we have to have that for that we should relax our shoulder and neck should be straight then each and every muscle should be relaxed no tension is applied so when we reach that position only kudalini can be triggered otherwise always we do this acrobatic movements and how mind can take rest it cannot merge resolve itself into the muscle so simple retention we have to practice as we develop like hakarena bahriyadi sakarena vishetpuna hamsa hamse di mandroyam savair jeevaisha jappide which means when we inhale there will be a sound within a subtle sound called hum mm. akarena bahriya the body will expand then when we exhale body will be relaxed that is what is called sakara so as you exhale there will be a sound sa see in our carnatic music you can see the basic sound, sound for the <laughs> so uh, with a you know like exhalation only sa is possible so hamsa ham se the mandroyam savai jeevaishya jeppide it is clearly said in the yoga shikha upanishad yoga kundalini upanishad nada bindu upanishad so when we practice this puragam with ham rejagam with sa this is what is happening even no need to recite that this is what must is said then then pranam surya na cha akarshya ureye idaram chanaihi vidivat stambagam krutva punat chandrena reje this is the shloka is really mis you know misinterpreted pranam surya na cha akarshya means you are not holding one nostril actually when you inhale body is expanding hum akarena suryasya sakareno induru chede means when you inhale your solar nerve is activated ureye udaram shanehi you know feel it udara means the belly shanehi as per your capacity vidvat stambagam your capacity hold it guru ji i am going to actually move to another place guna so charge my phone but you continue talking guru ji sorry my charge okay. is really low today sir okay then charge at night i kept with the inhalation hakaram hum is preserved that is what is called solar you know nadi so it is activated when we exhale sakaram is used sakareno induruchide the lunar nerve is activated so in between we have to vidiva stambagam krutva we have to hold as much as possible we are not competing with others we are competing with our own you know hidden energy so when we do this is what is called nadi shuddhi as we advance in this one your nerves will get purified when as the nerve is purif- uh, nerves are purified the clarity of mind will increase when you have a clarity in your mind it can easily be focused once mind is focused yatha mana tatha prana when your mind is focused in the uh, coccyx in the kundalini area prana will start spinning over there which will activate the kundalini the rest is experience then in between as we explained kriyas bandhas everything will happen then slowly even the asana also will get more you know up or stability this is what is called asana sthirada stability in asana so this should this thing should happen we should not practice in an artificial way so go through a simple practice it is exactly like sailing in the ocean in a rough ocean if you try to show your strength with the mighty waves you will lose in the way you must understand the rhythm of the waves and learn how to guide your boat fix it with the rhythm 
and slowly you can enjoy the ocean and along with that enjoyment you can cross the ocean successfully otherwise if you try to fight with the mighty waves what will happen down <laughs> guru ji wow this is so uh, you know this is so liberating to hear because you know guru ji like it makes it sound like such a confusing dangerous journey and uh, you and there's all this work and learning but you're so right the learning is actually inside as you go in this path and you keep exploring it all the learnings will just happen from the start from that intention that tapasya you do on your own seat every single day it does not require all of this this kriya and that kriya because they all you all uh, you figure it out as you go along your body allows you to figure it out but the one thing that you said was important is it's important for the body to be in the posture of a pyramid for the spine to be straight that is the only one external reality which is important to observe as you know whether you call it a kriya or just that is a technicality which is important otherwise that access is so that's the reason why you suggested bhadrasana guru ji is because of yes. that okay now yes. i understand i was going to ask you that also guru ji you know now it makes sense when i inhale and hold my breath there is heat so much heat generated in the body i feel uh-huh. hot starts sweating <laughs> now i understand because the solar energy is activated again no need to think a lot <laughs> okay but it's great because i'm like i never wondered why i sweat but i was like okay i'm sweating when i'm inhaling simply yeah simply understand this we are doing tapas tapas means heating the body tapa in sanskrit means heat so we have to heat in the body without doing anything we can heat in the body by doing a uh, joke when we joke we start sweating when we do other you know workouts in the gymnasium we sweat a lot or we do a physical work we sweat but when we do meditation we are resting all the functions of muscles but still we are sweating why by relaxing the mind or relaxing the muscles we can heat in the body it doesn't have any wear and tear this is the main interesting part any other exercise we do gradually we can you know see the uh, muscle wasting but in asana with a proper retention we will come to know how we can strengthen the muscles without giving any external activity so body will start sweating means you are increasing the heat and our plane of consciousness is based on the body temperature when you see a person who is having you know like a high fever maybe talking to some you know strange yes Why? yes as so the temperature to... goes up he will lose his conscious you know um, balance of mind actually that person is experiencing a different plane of consciousness when you see a person oh, or a yogi so true a person, yes a person who experienced a kundalini awakening you can immediately come to know his eyes will be red maybe uh, you know tears will be pouring and uh, his uh, people will move people will move fast and he will look like a, you know madman but that is the level where his body temperature will be very high there he is experiencing a different plane of consciousness exactly the other guy i mean the deceased person also experiencing only difference is one is disease it is beyond control that heat fluctuation is beyond control the yogi's heat fluctuation is created by practice that is under his control that is the only difference so heat can make everything change even our plane of consciousness our you know molecular ba- you know balance in our body everything can be you know unravel this is what we have to that was brilliant guru ji you explain a lot of things in that one sentence <laughs> and now even when people are sick they go into a delirium and they start saying things and they say even at the time of death you are jwara you have fever your body is hot because you are yes. you are switching planes in between two planes in this deha and in, and another reality 
Wow. Yes. Guruji, somebody has a very important question and I want to take that. Where they're asking that if somebody is, uh, has a physical handicap or a physical problem sitting straight, then uh, does it mean that they cannot follow this path or what is what can they do? Even lying down position, we can try. Gradually, that person can change his position. So whatever may be our present situation, just ignore and keep holding the breath. If a person is bedridden, he can or she can try holding the breath. Slowly, when we get that grip of prana, from nail, from our toe to head, we will feel the grip of prana. Then, again, as I told you before, yatha prana, tadha mana. Or yatha mana, tadha prana. They are complementing each other. So we can play with the pranic energy. So when we get control over the prana, muscle will be under our control. Sorry, mind will be our control initially. When mind get control, the molecules, the muscle can be restructured. Then the person can at least lean towards the wall and keep the spine straight. Gradually, person can improve according to his or her limit. Everybody can start doing that. Great, Guruji. So at least to start on the path, even if you have to start lying down because you have a physical problem, but gradually change the molecular structure because uh, mind is so much, mind creates your matter. And as you work on the mind, that matter will change, molecular structure will change, and you will find advancement and you'll be, you may even be able to sit through the practice. And I really believe that. I think I've also experienced that. So that is really true. Now, Guruji, yes. also somebody is asking, what is the significance of the shape of the pyramid? Which one? I, the sound was the, not clear. The what significance, was the, the significance mm -hmm. of the shape of the pyramid. Yes, pyramid is you know the structure which can fight against uh, gravity or the cosmic sh you know showers of energy. When the cosmic shower falls on this pyramid, it cannot be you know striking in one particular point. It will be dissipated. Then. On top of the earth, pyramid has a has the maximum area below the pyramid. So pyramid cannot fall. See the mountains, the shape of the mountain. Earth is rotating. It cannot fall. All structures which can withstand against the gravity is in pyramid shape. See in Egypt, why the 5,000, 6,000 year old pyramids are still surviving? Because the gravity affected over there is less than other structure. So gravity is connect, you know, directly linked with the perishing. So if you want to keep our body more straight and sustainable, we have to practice this pyramid shape. Second thing, if it want to penetrate, like when we reach to certain level of consciousness, even our pranic body can come out of our Annamaya Kosha, our tangible body. That is what is called Kudu Vittu Kudu Mata in, in Sanskrit. Means our pranic, our life energy can come out. We have five energies with it. Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manavamaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. So Annamaya only tangible. But all other four bodies are energy body. Mm -hmm. Prana. Pranic body can come out. Mm -hmm. It will survive in this earth minimum 120 years even after the death. So people think, oh, one person died means gone forever. No. no. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Yes, I believe that. Mm -hmm. If one form of body energy changes, it will appear in another form. Yes. So a person died means his one form, that one form of energy changed and it will remain in another form. That is what is called technically, relig religiously, it is said a reincarnation. So what you said it, last time, Guruji, that different plane of consciousness was, yeah. death is a different plane of consciousness. You said that is that. a different plane of consciousness and existence in that plane. That was beautiful, Guruji. <laughs> yes, wow. And so the two most important things I know before we end, Guruji, is that the most important, the few important things that you said is that that's thirata that is required. The steadiness is required. 
is extremely important for this practice you know when i imagine this anti gravity you're doing a pir- pyramid it's almost an anti gravity movement of the prana and to have that sthira to have to be sthira and to be in that pyramid shape allows for that reverse reverse movement of prana when your body is really ready and the tapa has happened yes and when we get that asana sthirada the stability in posture we will feel the effect of gravity of earth so mother earth is the first experience which we are exploring because that is the closest energy when we become capable of understanding the gravitational force of earth then slowly we will become more sensible or more sensitive with the other planets energy first energy we will feel the moon moon when we get the or understanding or experience of earth energy and moon energy slowly we will feel the other planets energy there are huge magnets and they have their own influence on us again it is another sub- big subject you know astrology is completely based on this magnetic force the variation of this energy it's a fantastic yeah. science yes absolutely so guruji next time can we do a q and a on this because i feel like there is still a lot of questions even in yeah. you know just the clarity you're giving us brings us keep bringing us back to the fact that even if you're home stuck here in lockdown in another country you're able to find the truth within and i think guruji yes. that is the single most powerful thing that we've had talking to you is the realization that it's within you you can do it on your own with some of your guidance i'm sure a lot of people are already walking on that path guruji so hopefully now next time we can come back to taking some more questions because people are writing questions and uh, and strengthen our practices like because like guruji said we can discuss it forever but we really need to start the practice yes keep doing it advise everybody to practice that simple breathing technique then when the student is ready instruction the guru the master will appear either it is it is from inside or outside no matter thinking of the origin no need, no need to worry about that just stick on the practice hold the breath as much as possible release it then observe the struggle inside the body when we hold the breath all, all tissues all cells will be struggling for oxygen monitor that struggle sakshi rupena darshana just observe it that will slowly guide you to the destination in between definitely every you know seeker will be in need of some guidance our masters the immortal souls they are available everywhere they will come to the seeker either through her you know webinar or an instagram, instagram. <laughs> it will come <laughs> Guruji, that's really what happened to me. I don't want to sound boastful. I started doing karma yoga, Guruji, in my life, and I experienced bhakti. I experienced some some revelations. I met Guruji. So everybody who's listening to this, promise you, this has happened to me. So I completely relate to it. From years, Guruji, I couldn't feel bhakti earlier. You know, I had such a hard time growing up. We went to the temple, but I could not feel bhakti, and I used to feel so bad that I couldn't feel it. But the moment I started karma yoga. just it started happening now i can feel tremendous bhakti in my heart uh, you yeah. know with the universe that you know that feeling of gratitude and automatically guruji came into our lives and uh, so so thank guruji you have said it exactly how it happens i'm so grateful <laughs> to hear that so in 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 so you were not matured enough to go to a temple so you did karma yoga now you got see that purification now you understand what bhakti is so you are capable of receiving the energy from the temple so definitely you may get a chance to visit any one of these powerful idols then that energy will be infused in you when you become matured enough to get that definitely it will happen yes guruji and i completely feel different today my praying is very different from what it used to be as a child i feel i feel it i feel even dhanvantri uh, i pray to dhanvantri every day and the three devis and i feel their energy so strongly good yes, 
Thank you so much, Guruji. We cannot wait Thank to you. chat chat with you again next Wednesday. Wednesday, pranam, Guruji. Pranam to you. Thank you so pranam. much. Okay. See you. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.